When it comes to precious metals, a lot of pretty crazy stuff has happened. Between corrupt banks manipulating the price of silver, getting caught paying a $900 million fine which led to three of their employees getting sentenced to prison, that's only one of the several unbelievably shocking, corrupt, and even controversial stories over the years. Even though bankers rigging the price of silver and going to prison is crazy, that is nothing compared to this. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Silver Slayer. Folks, if you're new, welcome. My name is Silver Slayer. I post daily videos, always giving you guys the inside scoop. You'll never miss a beat. Everything precious metals related, more specifically silver and geopolitical events, price analysis, the fundamentals like supply and demand, even some in-person silver stacking videos. I do everything. So make sure you subscribe, plus I do lots of giveaways. But anyways, the, the story that we're breaking down today is the Hunt Brothers. If you are not aware, three brothers did something so insane that it literally pushed silver's price to the highest it's ever been till this day. And what they did was shocking. They basically broke the silver market, made the government ban silver on the spot to stop these guys. It would have broke everything. Do you really think the government wants everybody to know why these brothers were truly buying silver because the dollar is worthless, they're trying to put their wealth into their own hands, taking the control away from them? No. Why would the government want the truth to get exposed like we do on this channel every day? Let's paint these brothers as evil criminals so nobody listens to them. They're just wackos. They, they don't know anything, right? They're just trying to get over on the system, quote unquote. So let's, let's dive into this because I have an article titled The Inside Story of How the Hunt Brothers Cornered the Silver Market. Just a little disclaimer, this ends in a tragedy, not only for silver's price, but for the brothers as well. So it's a saga that almost sounds fictional, but it's the real life story of two American wealthy brothers. There's actually three, but the two were the main ones who cornered the silver market and caused the price of silver to rocket from $2 an ounce to more than $50 an ounce. Imagine that. Imagine that. And this was only in 1980. You want to know something crazy? Why they got into silver? Because gold was banned at the time. Anyways, leaving his sprawling inheritance of billions to his family, including sons Herbert and Nelson, they took their oil money boon and invested into the commodities market. The Hunt brothers believed that inflation would cause silver to become a, a, a safe haven, right? Just like its more expensive cousin gold. Nelson especially believed there would be inflationary pressures that would mangle the value of any investments denominated in or tied to paper currency. Just like I always say, it's like switching seats on the Titanic. Anything that's pegged to the dollar is going down with it, including stocks. Precious metals is the only alternative, and these brothers knew that, and that's exactly why they were a threat to the government, right? Because gold and silver is a threat to the dollar, so if they're putting their money into gold and silver, people are wondering why these successful billionaires are doing that, and then everyone realizes why they are, that would be very bad. See where I'm going with this? That's why this story is such a deep rabbit hole, because there's the mainstream media side of things, and then there is the deeper truth underneath it. They reportedly bought more than 35 million ounces of silver, some of which they flew to Switzerland in specifically crafted airplanes guarded by arms Texas ranch hands and by stockpiling the silver and using their large cash reserves to buy up even more futures, the billions in demand caused the rise of silver to go up to $50 per ounce, the highest price it's ever been till today. This silver loving sibling continued to take delivery, borrowing heavily to snatch even more futures on silver once their immediate cash was all tied up. Let me say something real quick as well. You might be saying 35 million ounces isn't that much. Well, what they did was 
pretty crazy. They bought all the silver on the Comex and turned it into physical delivery. The Comex does not have a one-to-one -one ratio. Those contracts that are on the Comex technically say that your silver is tied up in a vault somewhere, the physical silver, but it's not. And if everyone tried to turn in those contracts into physical delivery, it would expose the corruption. It would expose this facade. And that's what they were doing. So the government had to do something. And what they did was ban silver. So anyways, um, the silver-loving siblings continued to take delivery, borrowing heavily to snatch even more futures on silver once their immediate cash was all tied up. By 1980, with every dollar increase in the price of silver, the Hunts were making $100 million on paper. That is insane. That is insane. But this chart shows something very alarming. I always say, you never want something to just go up, 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 because then it goes down, 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 down. There's no price stability, right? The price isn't stabilizing anywhere. And that's why when it corrects and it, you know, it hits that top from overbought territory, it just crashes, usually below where it even started in the first place. So anyways, it goes on to say grandmothers were selling their silverware. Thieves were making off with not just gold jewelry, but also silver items, and the silver craze swept from coast to coast. The government and economic authorities took notice and were not pleased. On January 7, 1980, in response to the Hunt's prime position, COMEX and the Chicago Board of Trade imposed emergency rules. And this is where Silver Rule 7 comes into play. Among these were higher margin requirements. This move stopped the Hunts from increasing their position by temporarily suspending the fundamental rules of commodities markets. Right? They banned silver. You couldn't buy silver. You couldn't buy it. You had to sell it. And who'd you have to sell it to? You guessed right. And since nobody could buy it, right, demand goes up with the price. So if the price, if demand rises, the price rises. But if demand stops because nobody can buy it, what does that happen to the price? It stops. And then when the price stops, everyone starts panic selling, which makes the price go down even faster, which led to Silver Thursday. Anyways, we're not there yet. Just a little, you know, a little context. So the price of silver began to slide. Margin calls on the loans began to bruise the hunts for reserves to the point of no return. They paid millions a day in calls, storage fees, and interest on March 27th, which is known as Silver Thursday. And that's when silver's price decreased more than half in one day on a Thursday. The silver futures market bottomed out by a third to $10.80 around two months earlier. These contracts had been trading at four times that amount. The hunts had put up oil and gas leases, real estate, coal leases, antiques, even Mercedes and Rolexes and lost them all, as the Seattle Times noted. The report adds a $180 million judgment against them pushed the hunts into bankruptcy, right? They screwed these guys up. And it was their greediness. I, I have, I can't say it was all the government's fault because they did make some silly, greedy mistakes, which did cost them. The, they were, the government was able to capitalize on that. All Bunker Hunt had left from his billions were a few million. A stable of racehorses and about $90 million tax bill to be paid over a 15-year period. In the words of then CFTC Chief James Stone, uh, price economics, uh, as Price Economics writes, the Hunt's antics had threatened to blast a hole in the financial fabric of the United States like nothing had in decades, writing about the entire episode a year later. And they described Silver Thursday as the first great panic since October 1929. The Hunt brothers endured more anguish, and this is a picture of them testifying before Congress in 1980. I showed a couple other pictures in the intro. They faced congressional hearings. They dove into legal battle with their lenders, and that was another huge situation, right? They, man, you guys got to watch. I'm not trying to do like a whole docu-series this video is kind of just highlighting the point, but maybe I'll go find that docu-series. Or if you type in like on my channel, type in like the Hunt Brothers um, or just type in like Silver Slayer Hunt Brothers on YouTube or whatever. 
I went deep into this rabbit hole. I showed the mainstream media side of thing. I, I went to the truth. I dug very, very, very deep. I probably showed five, ten different articles and then showed that I, I did a lot of digging. Um, but this video isn't supposed to be that if you guys want some more context into this because it is a rabbit hole. It's it's a headache. It's insane. But anyways, they were used or then they were sued by a Peruvian mineral marketing company, which had suffered big losses in the crash, right? Imagine how many people lost so much money because like the saying goes, it's supposed to be buy low, sell high, but most people bought high when all the hype was there, when silver's rising to $50, friends and family and news outlets are all talking about it. So they start buying at 30, 40, $50 and all of a sudden silver's back down to $5, everyone just lost tons of money so everyone's now you know pissed off at these guys when they should be pissed at the government but anyways um the jury ruled that they had deliberately conspired to corner the market and that's where the whole thing and, and let me bring in wall street silver in this too in a second so back then to d deliberately corner the market they said was a very bad thing which and that was their entire intent intent i don't think it was i think they understood the dollar is worthless and they have all this money billionaires and they know that that money sitting around in u.s dollars which aren't backed by anything is a terrible idea so they're trying to diversify which in return buying that much did push the price up but i think there was just a lot of hype around it especially once the story went viral and the only thing the government could do which nobody expected was ban silver which then shot the price back down so it's just a very complex situation that has layers but at the end of the day that pushed the price to 50 dollars. nowadays cornering the market is looked at as a positive thing almost because think about it, Wall Street Silver tried to corner the market. Basically, right, buy up all the silver, push the price higher. They were looked at as heroic when these guys doing it were looked at as criminals. You see how the story flipped? No, no, it's not exactly the same, but it's the same principle. Well, it was, and Wall Street Silver, I feel, something totally different nowadays, but, you know, that was the point, right? It was to squeeze, the, the, it's a silver squeeze. Right, squeeze the market, force the price to go up by buying all the silver. Silver squeeze, short squeeze. Uh, but anyways, the ripple effect of the Hunt Brothers story can be felt this decade. November 2013, CFTC proposed limiting the number of contracts a single trader can hold across a variety of markets. Key reference was the Hunt silver trading, an example of when these limits are necessary. And the CFTC stayed busy in the area of trading silver on margin. Um, and... Another thing is, uh, you know, like, let's say, let's say that this situation does happen again. The main reason this was such a bad situation wasn't that they were cornering the market and, and you know, the price was going up or anything, or even, it wasn't even that bad that the public would have known that these brothers were buying silver because, you know, they don't trust the dollar. It was more so because they needed that silver, right? If these guys owned up to 77%, I'm sure it's more like, probably like half of that, maybe even less. Regardless, a lot of the silver. Even in 1980, we were advanced technologically enough that we needed silver for everything still. And if they owned all the silver, we wouldn't have enough silver to make our our gadgets and our, you know, t the technology, just like nowadays with the silver shortage, you know, now recycling is so big and every, you know, that they weren't going to allow that to happen. And that's why I talk about silver confiscation being a realistic thing nowadays. If they were able to ban silver before, if they were able to confiscate people's silver before, Silver Slayer, they never did that. Actually, yes, FDR did in 1934, Executive Order 6814, stated that you have to turn in your silver, pay a $10,000 fine, 10 years imprisonment. But wait, Silver Slayer, that was the Executive Order 6102 by FDR in 1933, saying you have to do that with your gold. Yeah, well, guess what? A year later, he pushed another executive order which was the same exact thing, but with silver. Just 
the first one is the most popular. Check out my video I made a couple days ago on that. Anyways, uh, you know, this is a crazy situation. Let me know what you think about this. Did you guys know about the Hunt Brothers situation? If you did, uh, you know, do you have anything else to throw in there? What do you think about it? If you didn't know about it, welcome to one of the craziest stories. And it's not even just in the silver market. In like, I would say in the investment, in the investing world, period. You know, like this was huge. And if you were alive in 1980, I wasn't. But I'm sure most of you were since my audience base is like 50 plus, 60 plus. Um, do you guys remember this happening? And, and were you buying silver back then? Or did you guys hear it on the news? Like, if you have any insight, I would love to hear that. Um, Cause that would be such a wild time to to be you know living in that. So yeah. Anyways, if you guys wanted to purchase some, I recommend Miles Franklin. Send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Let them know Silver Slayer sent you. Andy Sheckman would love to hear it. He is the CEO of Miles Franklin. Miles Franklin was a company back in 1980 when this was happening. They've been in business for decades. Most respected, trusted company. Andy Sheckman and I have a weekly podcast. Um, he's a, he's out of town right now, so it's kind of hard to for us to do stuff. We might he might like jump on audio or something. I don't know, but you know we're making that stuff happen. Um, and yeah, send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Let them know Silver Slayer sent you. We have new deals every single Monday. Right now we have silver, gold, and platinum deals for you guys and gals. And um, yeah, also make sure you subscribe because I'm doing a silver giveaway and I'll pick the winner sometime next week. Anyways, this was Silver Slayer. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.